Hey, what's going on, champs? I'm Erin Deliosa. Welcome to an Immigrant's Life podcast, my podcast about immigrants and immigration and everything in between. Thank you for listening and downloading the show, and thank you for supporting my dad. Welcome back, Immigrant Nation. Another week, another new episode. Thank you for being here, and thank you for deciding to join us. Please settle and we will go into an adventure. But before anything else, as a healthy reminder, if you haven't joined the Immigrant Nation officially, I implore you to go ahead and click the subscribe button wherever you're listening to this podcast. And you can also join us by visiting our social media accounts. Our handle is at an immigrant's life. Also, if you or someone you know wants to be a guest on the podcast, reach out to our social media accounts, as I've mentioned just now, or email us at animmigrantslife at yahoo.com. Let's connect, and let's tell your beautiful story. And now, let's talk about the episode. This episode is like an adventure into a mind of a creative. A very interesting and colorful conversation with a filmmaker with an unusual upbringing. His train of thought travels fast through very interesting topics, so you better buckle your seatbelt for this beautiful ride. And let's not waste more time. Without further ado, let's get into the show. Isa, dalawa, tatlo. Today's guest is a film director and producer. He's half Ken Burns, half Scorsese. Everyone, please welcome Brendan Moriarty. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you for having me. It's lovely. Thank you for coming on, my man. I really do appreciate it. Well, I like what you're doing in, in your own, you know, multimedia art world, which is endless, right? You can go any direction with it. Um, you know, how, 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 how it is with your art? What was your first, like, thing that kind of got you interested in? My art. What you're doing? Um, I usually, I used to write a lot. Mm-hmm. I used to write a lot of uh, poem, uh, short stories. I, mm-hmm. I also wrote some um, short films. Okay, but That's I tried. Yeah, that I tried to make, but it never worked out. I still have them. I still have the specs, but mm-hmm. I just, I never, I never did anything with it. You know, I would love to do something about it. You, you the- should, you know, I mean, I think that's the first thing that all artists run into is, um, you know, probably rejection, right. Um, mm-hmm. in some form, yeah. you know, if it happens when they're young or it happens when they're in their career or whatever. Right. Um, but you really have to always, um, you know, tune that off, you know, and stick to the, you know, your inner spirit that is always giving you probably great ideas and inspiration. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so yeah, but I would recommend, you know, chase after it, but I always tell people if you wrote a, a a short script, then just add some more pages and make a, a a full movie. Um, because if an artist is going to go through the trouble to do the short movie, I say do a movie. Um, but make it simple, you know, or, or whatever style, you know, so many formats, right? You know, from drama, romance, horror, thrillers, action, um, documentary films, right? Yeah. And, yeah. There, and there's different kind of documentary films. There's live, there, there, there's live action ones and there's ones that are more interview driven. So, no, I mean, I think really short films don't make any money um, and, and there's no market for them. So I always tell anyone I meet, you know, do a film. Don't make it difficult. Even if it's about a, a you know, your, your beautiful story, being an immigrant coming to America, add some story to it, you know, and people want to go on an experience, right? Mm. And that's the best thing. And uh, I think, think that I try to do that in my life. And, and I'm very young. I'm only 33 years old. Um, but I started like 14 years ago when I was 19. I was in college and I had just finished my associates and I was in my bachelor's and I was like, I realized that you, you can go to university all you want. You know, my family, I come from a family of, of people that were archaeologists and, you know, high, high level government people. And, you know, in the, in the art world, no one's ever asked me what my degree is. No one really cares. 
you know, so, you know, I realized, you know, my, my cousins went to Princeton and my, 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 my mother, my, they went to Harvard and stuff. And my uncles and stuff went to um, Purdue in Indiana and I've another Ivy league school. But with me, with art, the only thing that makes you Ivy league is to make something epic, to make something that's unique, you mm -hmm. know? Um, and um, that's the, you know, the hidden truth about art. You know, and um, and really, you can do it in many in many ways. And I always tell people, you know, when I got into Hollywood, it was different because it was in two thousand nine when I when I made my first film. And back then, there was no digital. Netflix was still sending DVDs in the mail, <laughs> um, and the world didn't look good in my in, in, as an artist. It didn't look good. Mm. Because the whole marketplace for DVDs had crashed in the whole world. Um, in 2008, there was a big market crash. And, of course, being a young man, it didn't affect my life. But in the business world that I was getting into, it, it was affected. In the sense that Hollywood was broke. And they were really broke. They, there was not much money. And people would be like, how, was it? how were they broke? But Hollywood didn't really have much back then. Um, they had a lot of money, but they weren't making any money. Mm. Um, because um, Blockbuster and Hollywood Video, these are the main stores in, in America that people used to go buy and rent movies from, which was a multi-billion dollar industry for the studios. And these companies like went bankrupt. And my career is just starting. I was like, oh my God, you know, you know, um, this, is, this is a lot of fun. And, uh, but with me, I had people that I was lucky to be around that were, that were older than me. And I've always found you know, that being an artist, sometimes when you're around people your same age, it's, it's lovely, but it's also useless. Why? Because, you know, you know, look at what, what you, I mean, unless they're self-driven like you, you know, I always tell people, be around young people if they're self-driven. But mm -hmm. most people, even artists, most artists, they, they have the talent, but maybe they don't have the will. Mm. And, 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 and artistry, is having a mixture of a little bit of everything mm -hmm. because because if you do you know you you won't have to be a picasso that has to be dead to see the your art be appreciated you know um and and, and i think that's the same way with um you know filmmaking um in, in in the world that i'm in you know being young as a, as a director is definitely more unique because most people aren't young or they're not even you know it's it's i i don't meet anyone my age um and even though I'm just an independent filmmaker, I always tell people I just busted the boundary because I got every single magazine and industry in, in, in Hollywood to recognize my work. Um, and it wasn't because I made them, but I, you know, you worked hard. I worked hard for it. I, and I always, always knew that if they weren't, if they didn't talk about me, if I wasn't friends with the biggest magazines as an artist, then I was just doing myself disjustice because you know, a lot of people are like, well, I'm just an artist, Brendan. You know, I'm just an artist and I'm not going to, you know, um, be a, a, a good, you know, marketing, mm -hmm. you know, visionary. And I think as an artist, you have to be a marketing visionary, you know. You have to be. Um, you have to be clever in saying, you know, everybody really wants to appreciate things, but they don't until they feel that other people value it. A lot of times people don't appreciate it. It's like good, uh, good comedians, you hmm. know, like Jim Carrey, you know, he, you know, they always say, you know, in Canada, <laughs> my Canadian buddy who's artist is like, you have to leave Canada mm -hmm. to get Canada to appreciate you. Exactly. Because I have a friend that you is. Know, now, uh, I don't know that, but I'm asking you that, you know, I mean, that's no, no, what no, I No, 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 100%. Because I have um, a friend that he's a uh, stand-up comedian and he's a headliner here mm -hmm. and he's killing mm -hmm. it here, but he's killing in Canada. He's not mm -hmm. killing it in the States, you know. So sometimes he'll talk to some of his uh, colleagues that have moved to the States. And mm -hmm. then he'll say, oh, we're, we're uh, headlining this club and this club. And, oh, that's mm -hmm. cool. But you're still in Canada. You know. Well, you, you know, the thing about even with you, you have an advantage. You know, Philippines is an interesting place. It's raw. And if you made an authentic movie about something raw, did it right, 
in my opinion, you can make it popular worldwide. Mm-hmm. You know, it just no one's doing anything raw. You know, um, and I could give you know some you know some scenarios because I, you know even myself like my film. You got my be- beautiful picture. Uh, I, I appreciate that, uh, but my inspiration comes from other people, just like you. Um, you know, when I was a kid, I had a great opportunity because my parents, you know, were were learned people. You know, in, in their <laughs> late thirties, they started an organization to help people that had medical needs in Cambodia and food needs and educational needs. You know, my family donated the first computers to one of the provinces in Cambodia, you know, in 1996. Um, so, you know, you know, I, I had a weird life cause I was from new England, you know um, you know, my grandfather was a union leader for 50 years and was friends with Ronald Reagan and presidents and, and, and my grandmother who's 95 years old, you know, worked at the CIA. So, you know, I, I, I had, you know, an interesting bunch of characters in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, my parents, you know, they were more, they had more empathy um, and, and compassion for the world, which, mm-hmm. you know, even myself as an artist, you know, you know, they dedicate a lot of their, you know, time to helping others. And so because of that, I got to go to Cambodia and I went there as a kid. How old were you? I was six years old. Okay. Yeah, I was six. Um, I went there. Um, it was it was like January of 1996. So, you know, it was right before Cambodia and the Chinese New Year. And um, it was just a whole other place. You know, I remember getting off the plane in Thailand. because We stopped in Thailand first. And um, the air was thick. I, you know, my nostrils had never breathed that thick air before. I was like, you know, and I was very young. And I remember, I remember to this day, it was a very um, awkward breathing situation. Um, and so, you know, it just, you know, most people don't think about it, you know. And maybe the world was different back then. Who knows, you know, um, if there was more pollution in Thailand, who knows. Um, but, you no, know, Cambodia was a very beautiful place, really raw. I lived a good, when I was living over there, because we, you know, I lived there periodically, maybe a year, and then I'd be back in America for a couple of years, and I'd go live there for a year. But I was there a lot in my life, and, um, you know, I lived in a nice home, nice villa. You know, Cambodia wasn't a place where, you know, there wasn't good, but there was a lot of worn, torn areas. Um, but there was no Chinese influence yet. Like, right now, it's like, <laughs> it's you know, it's sad, because I saw it as a kid, you know, mm-hmm. um, you know, um, and and now it was in ruins, but there was a beautiful essence to it. It was like, there was the old French era. There was that the world, because if you watch footage of Cambodia prior to 1971, Mm. it was a brilliant place. It was so brilliant that, you know, it's, you know, trust me, the prime minister of Cambodia, he's doing a great job. But if you look at the footage, because I'm a, you know, as a filmmaker, I'm more curious about facts. When you look at footage and you see the time period of these places, it was just peace. There was a bliss to it. The people walked a certain way. And even nowadays, even when there's skyscrapers shooting up in countries, most people are not walking that way they used to walk because humanity's lost some of their soul Um, through all the carnage and people losing their heritage, you know, because ultimately, you know, everyone's going Western. Which kind mm. of annoys me. I tell people, you know, let us Western people do the Western stuff. You guys <laughs> want Western stuff? Come on over here, you know. Yeah. And you guys keep your your your. But again, it's the it's the great question that all great thinkers have talked about. When I mean great thinkers, I mean like you know Napoleon Hill, one of the great thinkers um, of how humanity is what it is, you mm. know. Um, you know, and why, why, why is there ruins all over the world and humans today still can't do that? Mm -hmm. Um, and of course that comes more from my mother's side of the family because, you know, when I was growing up, I had a lot of history knowledge about my family. My mother and her side of her family have gone back like a thousand five hundred years in like historical records. Mm. And so... Knowing that does something, of course, to your your brain, because to know 
something beyond just like, you know, your great grandfather or something. Most people can't even name their great grandfather. Mm -hmm. I can't, you know, (laughs) and, and it's not your fault. Mm. It's society. Society is turn people to care about their iPhone (laughs) and to care about every single thing that's useless, Mm -hmm. but your soul you know, and that's one thing beautiful about you. You, you, you're an artist. So at least your soul's like seeking that outer matrix that most people aren't tapping into. Um, and when you do that, of course, you know, like I said, you know, as, as, as a filmmaker, but also, you know, I'm not just a filmmaker, you know, most people, we, 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 we tag people for something. Oh, he's an artist. He's a filmmaker. He's a lawyer. You know, I tell people, no, no, I'm, I'm, you know, one of my pieces of my soul is a filmmaker, but you know, my other side of my soul is a revolutionary. Another side is a, you know, a spiritualist, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, um, so. And documentarian as well. Well, yeah, you know, I, in my first two films weren't documentaries. They were feature films. Mm-hmm. Um, and now I'm doing some documentaries, one on landmines called the, the lost pearls. Um, and that one's brilliant. I'm doing it with a, a wonderful woman who is a advocate for landmines, but also is the princess of Poland. And so that's been a lot of fun, but I started in film. I, I felt like film to me, I, you know, people are like, well, you know what? Making a documentary is easier. I tell people making a documentary is probably harder mm. because documentaries, unless you're going to make a, 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 you know, a shitty one, <laughs> you know, um, they're very it's very the best documentaries i've seen are clever there's one that i would recommend you watch him it would blow your mind it's called the institute Hmm. and there's a few films that came out called the institute but if you type in the institute documentary 2013 i think it came out that documentary of course one sundance and stuff but it was brilliant it was artistically brilliant um and it was all about an experiment they did in in san francisco Mm. where they put art pieces all over the city like you know like a um, treasure trove and 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 a part of this like program was to see how humans would interact with it and if you knew what it was you would kind of it's very it's it's wild i can't do it justice just explain it to you but it's a documentary that makes you think well that's a greater perspective of what mm. documentaries can do mm. by the way before we get too deep if you have anything to promote, if anyone wants to reach out to you, let them know. Oh, well, you know, I mean, um, you know, they can find me on, you know, IMDB, you know, or or on Instagram and stuff. But, yeah, that's wonderful. I appreciate you. You know, um, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. if people want to watch my movies, they can go on Amazon or Netflix and stuff. But, you know, um, it's, it's, it's simple. I mean, you know. <laughs> All right. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> that's, that's okay. But yeah. So you were saying something. I'm sorry for cutting you off. No, no, no. No, I was just saying. So there's many ways to to box things in a lot of times I would think documentaries are kind of boring. Mm. Um, but like I said, the Institute, if you watch it, it would, you know, blow your mind, um, as an artist, uh, because even me as a filmmaker, I'd be like, you know, that the pull that one off is hard. Mm. You know, um, even my two films I filmed, you know, you couldn't make them in Cambodia now like that. Uh, first off behind you, that picture, Mm. that road is near cap. And that road doesn't even look like that anymore. That, that road's been torn out and uh, they put a new you know, Chinese road and mm. um, probably you know, a bigger road, but that's history. What you're seeing there in the road, because on, on, on your left-hand side, where the, uh, that road, all that green area used to be a Japanese air, airfield in mm. World War II. I remember dirt biking as a kid out there and, and – and, um, trying to look for because i would go to up up in the mountains boat core b-o-k-o-r it's a mountain pretty brilliant but i went there in 1997 at like seven years old Hmm. and back then you could still find bullet shells on the ground from the war in the 1970s how about landmines oh there was landmines i mean i i didn't blow up um but, but you know um you know you know i still have all my fingers my my legs but um but, you know, it, it, it's real deal. I mean, I was just blessed. I mean, um, even filming my films, um, a lot of the areas where 
there's fake explosions happening. Those same fields used to be landmines everywhere. So we were pretty worried filming because you just never know because you don't <laughs> know until, until you hear click. I mean, it's the truth. You know, it's and at that moment, if you don't move your foot, you know, maybe everybody can run. And then, you know, you know, you, but, you know, you know, you know, but, you, you know, these are real thoughts that, you know, most young kids don't even think about. I remember mm. coming back to America and telling people about how Cambodia was. And, and this is before YouTube, you know, this is why people in their heads, they don't understand a lot of people. And I, and I'm young, but I feel like so many people just are so indoctrinated into thinking that YouTube's always been around. I mean, you know, you know, when was YouTube created? Most people don't know 2004. And even in 2004, it wasn't that relevant. I, when I was in college in 2007, I was like, someone was on YouTube and I was like, what the hell are you watching? It was just some, some stupid videos. And I've <laughs> never been into those stupid, you know, I mean, for me, I feel like it's, it's insulting my soul watching, mm. you know, stupidity because it also, it was, it's like in China, it's uh, illegal in China to show the TikTok videos for Chinese people. They watch different videos. They make them watch educational vid videos and people doing great achievements, great bow and arrow, you know, literally. So, the, the, the TikTok videos they make everyone watch, everyone's doing, it's really making your IQ lower. It's been proven. Um, and there's a great movie called Idi Idiocracy. Mm, yes, yes. And it is so brilliant because I, as a kid, I saw that film and I thought it was stupid. <laughs> I got older and I was like, man, the director's brilliant. Mm. He's talking about how humanity is becoming this way. And, hum you know, it's it's it's... And it's more in, like, let's say Cuba. Cuba, the people in Cuba, they love freedom. They love America. Hmm. They love it. Because they don't in America, have it. Yeah. But people in America, doesn't matter what color it is. Because if I, you know, and, and, I, and, and this is the fact, we're spoiled in America. Mm -hmm. white, white people are spoiled in America. Black people are spoiled. And even though there's injustices, but if you go to Africa... And you pull up in the countryside in Africa and you ask a black boy, hey, or do you have more or less than this kid in America? They would say, oh, man, I, I'll take that any day of the week. Amen, you know? man. I always talk about this. You know, when, yes, the, the say, you know? when they say uh, um, New Yorker is famous for this, the, uh, if you can make it in New York, you can make it mm -hmm. anywhere. No, you, you can't. You can't. Yeah. You know, there's yeah. Afghanistan, there's, you know, like you said, Africa. It's hard. Mm -hmm. Like, there's privilege. Oh, yeah. That's why sometimes, oh. you know, I grew up, I didn't grow up privileged. I was poor. I mean, we're yeah. talking about dirt poor here. Yeah. And sometimes people tell me stories. Like your parent made like a hundred bucks no more than a month. Is that kind of, that, that yeah. poor? Yep. Okay. That's you like, know? you know, that that's like a Cambodian poor person. Exactly. You know? So yeah, yeah. When people tell me stories saying, oh, you know, I grew up in Canada and we only have one apartment. You have a house? <laughs> that would be amazing. You have your do, own do, room. Do you have a car? You yeah. Know? You know, because it, absolutely, you know, and they don't understand what goodness is. And, um, mm -hmm. and that's why, you know, and I tell people, you know, trust me, I, I always am a seeker. That's why I'm a Freemason, <laughs> mm. you know, and most people, they, 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 you know, they think Freemasons, you know, we were the, the evil group that rules the world. <laughs> How do you and, get into and, that? And, well, you know, it, it, it goes back in my family like mm. uh, 400 years. Um, but you don't have to be that to, to be a member. To be honest with you, you know, on my father's side, they, they, they were, they were into other things. Um, and, and so not everyone's Freemasons in their family. Um, and a lot of people that are Catholic don't want to be Freemasons because, you know, the Freemasons and the, and, and the, um, the black Pope, which the black Pope is the man that controls the Jesuits. Mm. Um, you could type it on a Google. It's a very famous t term, the black Pope. Um, but the Jesuits, you know, were kicked out of the, tr the Catholic Church because they took them over. And then, and then they're back now. They've been back for like 400 years. But, <laughs> you know, there's so much history. And so history is very interesting because when we see history, it enlightens us. Mm. It, it, I always tell people that maps of the old world are so interesting. Um, and this is what the founders of America understood. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that most people think, you know, America had a revolution because England charged them 2% of tax. 
Well, I tell them I, I like that number now. You know, two percent is good. You know, we need, to call good. The, we need to call them back up and make that deal, right? You know, two percent is real good. Um, but that's how far humanity, you know, in, in in even in Canada, have fallen into being slaves. Because even in America, we're we're the freest country in the world. But every single person in, in every country is in bondage. You know, you know. Mm. Um, a person in America is in bondage 25% of, you know, at least 25%, right? Mm. You know, and that's real bondage, you know? What do you mean 25% um, of bondage? What do you mean by that? What bondage? Well, 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 well you know, the, I think the minimum tax on, on anything you make is 25%, mm. right? Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, that that's wow. a great thing, that that's a great bondage. But, now, if you, but we need that, tax now, if, to, if I, to make things. Well, no, you don't. I mean... You don't really in that sector, right? Think about mm. it. You pay taxes everywhere. When you buy gas, you pay taxes. Mm. When you buy groceries, you pay taxes. Everything you do, you pay taxes. So, you know, uh, um, you know, you know, so there is a place, even in America, you know, um, in New Hampshire, where I'm from, there's no uh, sales tax, mm. which is amazing. That is amazing. Um, <laughs> you, you can go, you know, because you could, because, you know, you know, in California, if I spend $100,000, I got a, in, in, let's say a sales tax, like I go buy a car, it's $9,000 in sales tax. Now, if I go buy another state, it's zero. I mean, mm. you just want, you know, and so when you start seeing this, you're like, oh my gosh. Now also in corporate tax, California is like, you know, I think 9% mm. and, and Texas is zero, you know? Um, and then, so that's why you know, Elon Musk and so all these people moved to, you know, Austin, And Austin's an amazing city. I mean, I live in LA. I've been living here since I first came to Hollywood. Um, off, you know, I, I don't always live here. I'm, I'm in the East Coast as well, but you know, I could always be in LA. It drives it drives you crazy, but also it makes you miss it as well. Mm -hmm. It's like a, you know, LA is a love hate relationship. You yeah, know? that's what that's what um, I feel with people that lives in LA. It's, they love it and they hate it. Well, it's like anything in life because I'm not in LA because I love it. I'm in LA because it's business. So it's like your office. You you love your office if it makes you money, but also you can't wait to get out of it as well. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Do you like the weather you know, though? Do you prefer the weather in the east or the west? Well, I love snow, hmm. but I do love just sitting out in the sun with my dog and relaxing and not being like frozen. <laughs> um, but um, but I but I love it. I mean, I I always tell people if I don't have some snow in the holidays, hmm. I feel like. You know, I'm missing out. Yeah, exactly. You want to experience the season. I mean, you live in the best part of Canada. You got a good season. You got all the maple. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, got, you, got, you know, and, and maybe, maybe, maybe because you live there, you don't go enjoy it. But if I was in, if I was going over there, you know, there's places in Montreal, as you know, and also Quebec. They're just mind blowing. Mm -hmm. you know, oh no, food. I love Montreal. I'm a big fan of Montreal. I love it here. You know, the food's amazing, right? Um, mm -hmm. Great restaurants, and of course. I always tell people everything's expensive in the world. So just eat good food. You know, mm. you know, when I was a kid, there was a difference, you know, a um, hundred dollars, a hundred dollar bill got me so much as a child. Mm. Now it's not even lunch. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Did you always want to go to film school, by the way? No, I mean, no one encouraged me. You honest you, my whole family, um, my mother was very encouraging, but no one said, Hey, you should go to film school. Mm. Um, They probably all thought it was stupid, um, <laughs> you know, you know, because, you know, they're, 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 it's the truth. It is kind of stupid. Mm. It's stupid if you don't plan to really do something with it. Mm. It's stupid because ultimately, you know, I could easily, you know, right now be a, a U.S. diplomat. But I also, I, cause a lot of my family, they did that kind of stuff. But also the government pays nothing. Mm. And you can't really do anything being a diplomat. Hmm. You know, diplomats are useless idiots and they, they, everyone thinks they're high level, but you know, with me, I'm friends with ambassadors of countries and hmm. their hands are tied like slaves. Hmm. They can't really do nothing. They're just you know, more of like puppets. Yeah. You, you, they, you know, if they're going to a meeting, someone already told them to say yes or no. Hmm. They're like project managers.
Absolutely. You know, smile and shake hands. <laughs> Stay pretty. <laughs> and report back, you know. <laughs> um, you know. <laughs> I like that. I like how you put them that way that, you know, obviously people look, oh, he's an ambassador of this, ambassador of that. Well, but sometimes, I mean, let, let's be honest. Hillary Clinton, she's a character. She's probably naughty, too. But I <laughs> liked her as a diplomat because she was a kind of diplomat mm. that you don't always get. Mm. And that's how, you know, that's why, I mean, I mean, people say, are you a Democrat or Republican? I'm like, I'm both. Like my grandfather said, you vote for whoever is going to do better for our country. You know, you don't vote just because you're a party at that, that. That means you're an idiot. That's dumb. Yeah. Um, yeah, you really should just like, you know, and it's funner to be a rebel, a, a rebel. Because, mm. you know, a rebel is a term for a revolutionary, you know, um, you know, he's a rebel. Um, but America, all its founders Even Joe Biden is a rebel. Um, you know, Donald Trump's a rebel. Um, no one in power is not a rebel. Mm. Nancy Pelosi, a rebel. Mm -hmm. Her family's mafia. <laughs> I mean, if you, if you researched her, who her grandfather was, mm -hmm. they're all corrupt people. Well, she knows But how to play the... She's actually really good as well with um, stock exchange. She, well, she knows. Again, I mean, I mean listen... My, you know, and this is the thing that kind of, that's why I can talk about it because it's not like any of my family has gotten rich from mm. being a, a government official. <laughs> you know, my, you know, you know, um, when I think about being rich, I think, you know, how did you make the money? You know, my mother's side of the family, you know, we're in, you know, into metal manufacturing. It's, it's a, it's a crazy huge company, but mm. you understand how they made money, you know, um, And they made money because ultimately they started in the 40s and they've had it for 80 years. And, you know, mm. America's been good business. Um, now it's been not as good. I would mm. say, you know, um, and, that, and that, that's the beautiful thing about the new generation, like my, my generation, is that we realize that our politicians have stolen a lot of the opportunity by, you know, helping countries that, you know, that, that literally have been like bad for the world, you know. Mm. Um, um, so yeah, I mean, so when you look at the different, you know, geological issues in the political world with how things are, you definitely think to yourself, yeah, I mean, mm. things are very, you know, corrupt and it's mm. not just corrupt in third world countries. People always say, oh, you know, Cambodia, it's corrupt. Mm. Oh, trust me. Everything's happened in Cambodia. Corruption is happening in London and happening in, um, you know. Africa. <laughs> mm -hmm. By the way, speaking of Cambodia, do you speak Khmer? Oh yeah, I, I, I speak it uh, fluently. You know, I, oh, wow. if, if you knew Cambodia, yeah. but you know, it's not because I'm Mr. Expert. It's because I was there at six. I learned it before I knew it. Mm. So I always tell people, I don't remember the day I learned it. You know, I can just speak it. You know, mm. um, if I got on the phone with somebody, they think I'm Cambodian. You know, um, the, one of the first deals I ever made for my dad, a land deal, was um, I did in Cambodia on the phone. And um, the guy's like, if I knew you were a foreigner, I would never give you that commission. <laughs> But has it ever <laughs> happened to you when you're in Cambodia that people was talking shit about you, speaking in Khmer, and you're like, these people are yeah. talking about oh, me. Oh, 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 yeah. And of course, you know, I, I'll, I'll call them out. But, um, you know, the, the thing about Cambodia is most people that I was around already knew I knew it. Because, mm. you, know, Cam you know, in Cambodia, I had, I, you know, I had two sisters And um, they, they both got married to influential people in Cambodia. Mm. And so I knew all these people growing up. I knew the poorest of the poor the kids because I would hang out with anybody. You know, I'd play soccer with anybody. I was pretty open to hang out. And I would dirt bike around a lot. So I met everybody. Um, and But I had some of the richest friends as well, you know. And so I had a, a clear way. And I kind of brought them all together because, you know, When you're 16 years old in Cambodia or 15, you know, everyone's having cocktail hour, you know, <laughs> and it's, you know, it's like someone's calling someone up, you know, um, and usually it's the, it's, it's, you know, it's the rich friends that are financing the whole thing. You know, everyone's <laughs> going to dinner somewhere and it's cocktail time, you know, or whatever, you know, and, and it really wasn't cocktails. Maybe, maybe it was like beers or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, um, It was later in my life that, you know, I started going to places, you know, um, that really had cocktails in Penal Pen, you know, because 
Cambodia was a free place back then. Now it's, eh, you know, it's a lovely place, but it's not the same Cambodia as when I grew up. What you do know? you mean by that? Well, back then it was Cambodia. You know, yes, it, you know, but it, now everything's in, everything's Chinese owned. Mm. Chinese people are running over. I mean, if you go down to the southern part of Cambodia, Chinese people own everything. All the, the, the restaurants are owned by Chinese people. And the Cambodian people, they have nothing. Now, of course, there's some rich Cambodians. But for the normal Cambodians, really sad because they lost their country to, the, to these Chinese people that are being sent there by mm. the Chinese government to, to literally take over the country. In the next two generations, unless Cambodia uh, makes it out in a, make it illegal, because in America, we're, we're making it illegal in America for Chinese corporations to buy land in America. Mm, and, yeah. I, and, and I love I love Chinese people. I just don't like the communist. OK, the, the um, government. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, mm. the Chinese people are wonderful. Hong Kong's wonderful. But, you, you know, did anyone say anything about Hong Kong? No. Mm. You know, um, I did. But, you know, the truth is, is that, you know, everyone's saying Black Lives Matter. Well, what about the Hong Kong Lives Matter? You know, people in Hong Kong, they are completely different as the communist Chinese. They've been living in freedom forever. Yeah. Or Taiwan. Well, Taiwan's an amazing place. Mm -hmm. I always fly. It's either Ta Tokyo, Taiwan, or Bangkok when I go to Cambodia. Mm -hmm. But Taiwan's amazing. They don't even make you take your belt off in security. <laughs> They treat you like a, you know, a good human being. Like they're really nice. Like they're, they're like sweethearts. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I never met security people at an airport. So nice. They're like, I don't know. You know, they're really nice people. Mm. You mentioned earlier that you're a film director, but do you also write your own movies? Absolutely. You know, um, mm. I collaborate with other people. You know, usually I, if it, at most I do the first draft and then I'll bring in another writer and we'll collaborate because Sometimes as an artist, you kind of want to, you know, have a chance to breathe. And sometimes when you're working with another collaborative artistic person, you both have time to, you know, breathe a little bit and be like, wow, that's, that, you know, I wouldn't have come up with that. And they couldn't have come up with what I came up with. And so you get to, uh, you know, and also when you're doing scripts, right, it's always about different characters. Every character ha should have a different flavor. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes... Maybe one of the characters I do bril brilliantly, and then there's another character that might need to be, you know, done by someone else. Mm -hmm. Earlier, you mentioned that the first two films that you did, uh, The Road to Freedom, are feature films, right? Yeah, uh, Road to Freedom and in Year Zero. Yeah. Yeah. Now you're doing a documentary. What made you decide to do documentary now? Well, I mean, I for first off, my career is just in the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, it wasn't that I didn't want to make documentaries before, but the truth was, is I didn't even think I was going to make the road to freedom as my first film, you know, um, you know, um, you know, it just, it just worked out my, you know, a year prior in 2008, I was trying to make another film happen. And, um, you know, one thing turns to another, it, it, you know, it didn't work out. And so I was pretty much like, well, you know what, Brendan, we're going to do something epic. And of course, you know, slowly but surely I just, you know, maybe i was a little um, you know psychopathically just like locked in and, and and got it done i think you have to be you have to be you have to a be a little crazy crazy yeah, yeah. You, you know um and with me i knew cambodia i i knew generals i knew tons of people since i was a kid they they all knew me as you know as a kid and i was an adult now but they were all like yeah Brent, you want to have some soldiers and of course, you know, I would say, you know, listen, you know, because I knew how Hollywood was. Hmm. Hollywood had gone there when I was a kid at 11 years old. They made to Tomb Raider, you know, hmm. Angelina Jolie. And because, you know, I had high level family members, I, I, I would get to go watch them production. No way. Yeah. And, and, and this, of course, before I, phones with cameras. So I'm, it's, it's the saddest point of life. You're like, oh, my God. And nowadays I would have been on Instagram live. But it was just, you know, hilarious to see them in Cambodia. And then Matt Dillon, a great actor, he went to Cambodia and he was just a, a Hollywood movie star. And he, he decided to direct his first movie in Cambodia. And it was about a story that he wrote called City of Ghost, which was about just this character that's kind of like hiding off in Cambodia. He's on the run. And it was a beautiful movie. 
And so I watched that movie when I was a kid. I saw, I, I went to the movie set, of course, you know, I was like 12 years old. It was right after Angelina Jolie came, he came and I was like, yeah, this is, the, this is magical. Like movies are coming back and back and Brendan gets to go hang out on set. And, and, and people are looking at me like, what the, who the hell are you? And a lot of people wouldn't even question it. They, they saw a white kid. They, you know, they just, it was, it was an interesting circumstance of life. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, all, all the, you know, the police officers that were guarding the posts and stuff, they, they knew who I was. Mm. So they treated me. So I, you know, I, I got the inspiration from other people. I was like, wow, this is, this is brilliant. I need to have my own set like this, mm-hmm. you know? And it became more of an obsession being like, you know what, let's do it. And so I think there was plenty of time for my subconscious, you know, to be like, wow, this is something that we can do. Cause I saw the inner workings. I knew that it just cost money. And with me, I was like, well, that's just a number. I got to figure that, what that out. And I was always good at as a kid to figure things out. Um, it's just like, you know, cause most people, they, they see an obstacle as a no, I see it as come back tomorrow, <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. And so, you know, with me, I, ne- I, ne- I never let anyone tell me no. Mm. like it was with, with film like also we with big film big big magazines I, you know i have some of the best publicists in the world mm-hmm. and i've been in some of the best magazines but it's because i told them i was like listen i don't care because they, they always tell me brendan you know people when they review movies are mean and i'm like i know i know this oh, the people that are high level are always the most mean the critical mm. to, uh, to 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 people that are, are the designers the critical to tom hanks for god's sakes that's life. People love being a critic, but I knew from a rule that it doesn't matter if they, if, if they give me love or they give me hate, if they're talking about me, it's what no one can get. Mm. And, and in marketing, that's the best thing. So of course, you know, I had Huffington Post say, Hey, Brendan bypassed the Hollywood studio system. You're an exception. And you know, you know, New York times, they think that because I wasn't, I didn't really make my movie a, a bloody movie. You know, my mm. movie was about two guys getting lost, which is a true story. But it also wasn't about the Khmer Rouge at the, the, at the peak. It was in 1971. And so in 71, Cambodia wasn't overthrown yet. There wasn't mass murder yet, okay? And so my movie's in 1971 when Cambodia still has the Cambodian army fighting against the Khmer Rouge there in the black. Mm. And so I'm, there's no film ever about the prior. And this is 1971. All the oh, movies yeah. like Killing Feet... Killing Fields is about 1975. Cambodia is fallen. Everyone's getting, you know, brought out of Phnom Penh to the countryside or getting killed. Um, my movie's about the the before the fall, the you know, the what's left of of I guess non chaos. Hmm. Earlier, you mentioned about film critics. I want to ask you: Do you think film critics has lost their powers ever since IMDb and Rotten Tomatoes started coming out in the scene? Yeah, you know, Rotten Tomatoes is pretty cool because Rotten Tomatoes, if people, the more people you get to go and give you um, positive reviews, the more it goes positive, right? So you can you can kind of control it in a positive way. Um, critics, I mean, critics are like I, like I said, I I I've only been I've only gotten critics from New York Times. Like like I like I never went to small critics. I you know it's just you know when when, when with me, I was in a different world, you know, like, you know, when you have big PR people, you know, they don't want to reach out to any small people. And that's why with me, I'm very open to everybody. I, I, I think to myself, the old platforms are dying anyways, even though they're still powerful, you know, uh, podcasts like yourself and a new artist can make a new reality of, you know, bringing forth something that most people don't understand. And that's why I even think with yourself, like as an artist, like, you know, there, there's, it's unlimited what you can do. Um, so no, critics are cool.
Because they always say, everything that comes from your parents, everything's DNA driven. Uh, you know, people say, oh, you can get, um, you know, diseases from, because, you know, or you can get more prone to diseases because of ancestors or, or relatives, right? Mm-hmm. You know, cancer or whatever. But the same thing is for positive, right? We, we never need to forget that. In mm-hmm. life, there's always both, you know? Exactly. You know? Um, you know, there's a lot of people that, you know, say, oh, God doesn't exist, but they are Satanist or, or they're very satanic or very yeah. evil energy. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's like the, v, the, the, you know, the, the Grammys in, 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 in Hollywood. <laughs> you know, the, you know, um, you know, and it's not positive energy. It's not like you would play that for your kid before they go to sleep, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so the question that I ask people is that you know, I'm very open. I'm a liberal, but I like to ask myself, what kind of energy is it pulling? Right? It doesn't make me feel brilliant. It doesn't make me feel beautiful, right? Mm. And so, as an artist, you know, if you make people feel somewhat connected, you know, my mm. films. At most, you see Cambodia. I show Cambodia in pretty much every different spectrum, from, from rivers to mountains to ocean to rice fields to salt fields to, to monks in caves. You know, my movie shows a little bit of everything. And, and I did it also because I knew Cambodia is changing. The roads are going to change. Light mm. poles are going to change. Um, how, how things feel. You know, there's no longer going to be, you know, the same atmosphere. Mm. And so it's more historical, too. And mm-hmm. that's why there is a museum in Cambodia that has my a wall dedicated to my movie. Nice. But, um, Congratulations. And I didn't, I didn't even know it happened. I had a friend <laughs> be like, hey, did you know you're in a museum? And I was like, when did it happen? Oh, a couple years ago. Oh, thanks for telling me. <laughs> they um, didn't even invite you or anything? You know, you know, I, you know in life, you know, it's, it's like I, ha- I got an alumni award for my university. Hmm. I, I was back in the East Coast. My mother's like, hey, there's this box for you. <laughs> and I was like, when did it come? She's like, oh, a couple years ago. And I was like, because, you know, with me, I don't always get back to everybody. I mean, there's people always hit me up. Hey, Brandon, come on over here. I'm like, I'll see you later on, buddy. Um, hmm. So maybe I got an invite. I didn't know about it, but I didn't know hmm. I was in there until afterwards. And it's just nice to, because it's really not me getting the love. It's the spirits of the universe. You know, I, I'm blessed because of the universe. Hmm. I think everyone is. And when, once you start tapping into that, and you give the credit away, you know. Um, yeah. You know, I, 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 rather, I completely I'll take the understand blessings, that. Mm-hmm. I will take the credit. Yeah, you know? me too. I completely <laughs> understand that because you know, as I said earlier, I used to write, and yes, sometimes yes. you're not even thinking, and this thing comes. I don't know where it comes from, and you just have to write it, and you don't have to do anything. It's perfect. No, you know? I mean, it, it's 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 your higher self, and also God. Yeah. Um, you were talking about TikTok and in- Instagram earlier, and I want to ask you: Yeah, does it bother you when you see TikTok and Instagram people acting? Do you think you would be good for the film industry, or it will lower the bar of acting? I think. Uh, listen, if, if 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 TikTok was used right, it could be brilliant. Mm. You know, if TikTok, if every day t- t- if people were 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 posting a powerful thought that came to their mind and that was the hip thing mm-hmm. then that would be pretty motivational because it would make kids do something that's useful but when you're doing useless things it's just bad and what's so sad is that we're people are always complaining about how society is unjust and whatever right hmm. but they're not using their time to make anything wonderful you know mm. you know they they, they 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 all will whine about it but they won't do anything yeah because it's easy I, yeah, but it, it, it's useless. And with me, I love everybody. You know, I grew up where I was the only white person mostly. So, <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't have the same feelings as, as most people in America. You know, um, you know, you know when, I, when I hear about inequality, I'm like, well, inequality stops with each person. If we all treat each other with kindness, hmm. if, we, if, if China, I mean, even China, China – was almost, and, and, and I wish, they were almost at a revolution. Chinese people were re- revolting in China. It hasn't happened in like 70 years that people in China had the balls to go out and protest in mainland China. But because they released the restrictions, it made all the protesters be happy because they gave the protesters what they wanted. But it definitely made the CCP very scared. I think when the end of the day, the great thing about America is that America is imperfect. 
but America is more perfect than any other place on on earth. And if it wasn't, why are people running to our country? Why is everyone in Latin America running to America? They always say, you know, America's the racist. Racist? I mean, trust me, I get history. But let's just be clear, ladies and gentlemen, you know, in South Africa in 1991, they still had the apartheid in Africa in 1901, but we got rid of slavery in the 1800s. Now, people can say, well, there was still the, you know, other things afterwards, or oh, whatever you want to say, America moved faster. Now, another history, another thing for everyone, their history, because people like history, let's talk about it. In Brazil, the Spanish brought 8 million black slaves to, to, to Brazil, more than any amount in history on any country. Are, are, are people in Brazil complaining about that? No. Why? Because Americans are a bunch of spoiled brats that have nothing better to do than to complain. And it, I mean, well, let's think. Let's think. In 1935, brother, Hollywood gave a Academy Award to a black woman in the movie Gone with the Wind for supporting actress in 1935. If Hollywood was racist, would we have done that? No. 1935? Uh, you know, the, the, the thing is that people, you know, liberalism, and this is the thing you can research, communism has infiltrated America since the 70s. It infiltrated through the school systems with young teachers teaching liberal Marxist communist ideas. And because America is such a free place, it's somewhat allowed unless it, we make laws to make it illegal, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, like now with, with the gender situation, that allowing gender, you could be identified as, I don't know, a robot. Well, well you know what? Let's think about it. It doesn't mm. bother me. I nah. think that if, if, if a person says, hey, I'm now a boy and it was a girl, cool. But they're making a normal man and a normal woman lesser now, mm. you know? You know, you know, and, and this is where transhumanism turns into, mm. because if everybody's not doing what they're supposed to do, then you don't make babies anymore <laughs> and the world is dead. And there's many books written about this. This is not my ideas. You know, I, I, maybe my issue is I'm too educated. You know, I read too many books. But, you know, when you read books like The Brave New World. Mm. Love the book. And The Huxley. Brave New World is like a... 1984, but it's about the corporate companies owning the world. Mm -hmm. And that's already happened. You know, Amazon has more money. I mean, Jeff Bezos, if he had an army, he could take over any country because he has more money, GDP. Mm -hmm. You know, the Amazon's GDP is more than most countries' GDP. So the wealth is crazy in an amazing way. Um, all American billionaires, you know, mostly own the world. Not, you know, and there's a lot of European billionaires, but we're not talked, we don't, we're not told that, you know, mm -hmm. um, but I do agree with, uh, Black Lives Matter in the sense that when they, when they say, you know, people are Nazis, well, they, their people are Nazis. You know who the Nazis are? Klaus Schwab of the World Economic Forum. His grandfather was a Nazi researcher. I'm not telling you, he knows it, but he just doesn't want you to know about it, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, there's you know, a lot of company like Hugo Boss created the uniform for the Nazis. It, absolutely. No, and, 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 and you know what? With people, with, with companies, they can get away with it. Why? Oh, well, we're, we, 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 we paid our, our thing. Like Siemens, you know, Siemens, the company Siemens. Yeah, the phone company. Uh, yeah, that company, Nazi mm -hmm. company. IBM. Um, it's, it's a CD and, and IBM, you know, and, and of course, you know, Bill Gates's, uh, you know, mother worked for IBM. You know, Bill Gates wasn't a smart dude, and he, and he knows this, you know. And, and, and I, I don't think that's Bill Gates, but if I met him, I would tell him the truth. I mean, dude, you know, the problem with you is that you're just a hack, you know. You, <laughs> you know what the you, problem you, with you, Bill Gates? You have too much money. <laughs> well, you know what? He really doesn't. I mean, the problem with Bill Gates is that he has so much money, he can't spend it. He can mm. only spend some of it. Because think about it. To be the richest man, you can't spend your wealth, or mm. you, you're not the richest man. 
And so you're really limited to maybe, you know, he's limited to maybe a one or two billion dollar expenditure every year, maybe hey, 10 billion. I'll take that one billion any day. I know. <laughs> but, but, but again, but, but you could. You know, the fact is, is that he, like any businessman, you know, you know, I'm very young, but even as a businessman, you must look at it. He just said, listen, how can I figure out a or how can I do something that has a bigger return? Hmm. Right. And that's business. Like, you know, it's like water. Water is a great profit return. It does. You know, if you have the res if you have water at the resource, you all you do is got to, you know, filterize it or do the process and bottle. You don't have to mix chemicals and make up food. So there, hmm. there is businesses that are better than being a milk business, you mm -hmm. know, got to suck all the milk, got to, you know, do all the filtration and then bottle it. And so, 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 so there's probably more profit margin in water than milk. And <laughs> so, you know, you know, so Bill Gates, he's a smart dude, but it's, it is a, a Ponzi s system, you know, and I would agree that when the Black Lives Matter says, you know, there is a lot of Nazis, I would say they're, they're, they're right, right, but wrong because they're pointing the wrong finger. There's, you know, like I said, like, um, the president of the EU, um, his name is Juncker. Mm. He, uh, he's the richest family in Luxembourg and his family, big Nazis, <laughs> like, and you research this, you know, it, but no one cares. Let's just be honest. No one cares. And no one wants to call them out. Mm -hmm. You know, no one has the balls to even though it won't affect their pocket. You think it's going to affect my pocket? You think, you think Klaus Schwab is financing my movies? Come on. So, you know, I, I'm not a slave to, to be in, you know, scared of that. I do love the American system. I do believe that, you know, um, if, there were, if, if the world had to have Russia be in the superpower or China or America, I think America is the one to go for. And um, that's why there's so much hatred being done by the communists in America. And that is mostly the Democratic Party because the Democratic Party, it used to be a wonderful party. It used to be wonderful, even when B Bill Clinton. But now it's a bunch of hateful, you know, people that, you know, come to America. I mean, most of these congressmen are first generation. They have the power as a congressman and they have so much anger towards America's unjust. It's like, is unjust? You have so much power. Why did you get that power if it was so unjust, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it, it, but we we ha we are taking more control of our country. You know, we we, we took control of the the Congress, and you know, with me, I love Bill Clinton. I wish Hillary Clinton had won the presidency. Of course, she didn't. Um, but J Joe Biden's a moron, and even he knows he's a moron. He can't even speak right, and he just makes our country look stupid. And 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 I would stick by that, you know, because you know, he is not a person that's made our country stronger, more mm. united. Um, Donald Trump united people more. You know why? Because everyone's was making more money. Mm. Gas was, was, was 50% cheaper. And, um, when, when you're making people have a better life, it doesn't matter if they hate you. you, you it's better. Yeah. So Donald Trump, you know, I mean, that's the whole thing. Do you want a guy that's talking sweet to you, but, uh, fucking you over? Or do you want a guy that's talking smack to you, but making things happen, mm. you know? And it's like, that's what they were. You know, Donald mm -hmm. Trump would, would, would say anything. Definitely, and kind of, definitely. It, and one thing I love it is that, you know what? It, it reminded us all that we were all free to, you know, say what the fuck we want to say. But everyone's <laughs> been so like, you know. Yeah, they're, they're you know, trying to like please people like, oh, you can't, you can't swear because, you know, people won't vote for you. Please your mother. Please your lover. Please mm. your friends. But you know what? Common people on the street, if they disagree with you, okay, cool. You mm -hmm. know, it's better that way. I, I, I don't mind if someone's a Democrat. I, I'll love them the same. And now, now Democrats might hate me. They're like, oh, Brendan, you're, but I'm, I'm nothing. I, I told people I didn't even vote the last, last, last election. I was, I was out of the country busy. But um, with me, I just love people all having the same opportunities. Like, you know, um, gender equality, I think, do it, but don't make a person that changes their gender more special now than a person that is, because they used to say, oh, women, you know, Me Too movement was all about women, right? That's amazing. Hmm. But now, women are not the importance. I mean, I mean, you know, people that are winning more awards are, you know, bisexual. Yeah. You know, if I if I went bisexual tomorrow, I'll probably, you know, get an academy. Uh, um, you know, it's the truth, and that shouldn't be that way. We should really treat people based on their m moral values or their talent. The you know, characters. I don't care if a person's purple, like. If you're a brilliant person, that's amazing. So, 
you know, I, I think we're just, we're not doing ourselves justice and we're doing the opposite of what Martin Luther King said, you know? Mm. So I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to be in a country one day where my kids won't be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Beautiful. You know what? Let's close with that. Yeah. All right. Again, my man, Brendan, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I really do appreciate it. No, I, I, I you're, you're amazing, Aaron. And, um, Again, you, you have a big future ahead of you, and um, keep it up. Thank you, sir. Have a good evening. Blessings. Bye. Again, Brandon, thank you for coming to the podcast. I really do appreciate it. Thank you, listeners, for listening. This is Aaron Deliosa for An Immigrant's Life. I'll see you guys later.